and today we want to fix the transmission cooler and we want to work on the winch so if you've been following me since i installed the winch you know that i had to relocate the transmission cooler and we had this problem where it was sticking out below the bumper so today we're going to be addressing that so if you look at the free spool switch here you can see that it sticks out a little bit from the bumper I want to rotate the gearbox so that the switch goes to the back. I, I'll still have enough room to engage it and disengage it. But that way, if I happen to touch anything, I don't hit and damage the winch. I would touch the winch plate instead and save the winch. This is what we're working with here. This is the transmission cooler. It's a Heaton 679 transmission cooler, which is 11 inches. In order to fix our problem, I'll be replacing that with this new transmission cooler, which is a Heaton 687. It's slightly smaller at seven and a half inches, but it'll get the job done. And you're probably thinking, why don't you just relocate the transmission cooler to the middle? So let me show you what's gonna happen if we do that. So if you relocate the transmission cooler behind the winch, uh, there's not going to be a lot of airflow to cool the transmission cooler. And because this is a snug fit here, there's not a lot of room, uh, we're going to limit the airflow that goes into the AC condenser and my AC not going to cool that much. So I prefer cool breeze. So the solution to all of that is a smaller transmission cooler. Right, so inside the box we have some fittings, we have the transmission cooler, some line, some hose, and connectors here. Now this type of transmission cooler is not like the 689, 689, yes. This is the AN fitting version, so it's not a push fitting, it's a screw fitting. And you'll see why I need that just now. So the plan, pretty straightforward, you're just gonna unbolt this one and bolt on this one. Hmm. The brackets different. You're gonna have to shift the brackets in a little bit closer to accommodate this one. I thought it was the same same mountain style, but it's not. I wonder if this one come with new brackets. So I just check your box and this one did not come with brackets, unfortunately. So I will have to reuse this bracket. So check that out it's perfect you can't see anything there's a slight thing uh, i could maybe like an eight inch you can see there but that's fine as always so now that we know it fits and everything is good we could start to install the fittings all right so now it's time to mount it back on the jimmy so now it's just to disconnect the hose from the old transmission cooler and reconnect it to the new transmission cooler. So I don't want to make a mess on the concrete. So I just took a garbage bag and I cut this open. So now if any transmission fluid leak from the hose only disconnected, it's not gonna stay in concrete. So you're gonna remove the old transmission cooler. Uh, you don't want to do this when transmission hot for obvious reasons. You don't want to burn yourself. So I ordered this tool to remove hose. Let's see how quick we can do this without making a mess. Maybe I should do it like this. If I keep the hose high, shouldn't have too much of a leak. That's my theory.
So this transmission cooler is a plate and fin type, which I would highly recommend you buy um, over the tube and fin style. The plate and fin is, a, is about 33% more efficient than the tube and fin. So that's the new transmission cooler. You could see how the 90 degree fitting came in really handy. This is why I wanted the one with the AN fitting so I could run these uh, hose really neat. So that's how it looks. And most importantly, let's check the bumper fitting. Fits like that and no more protruding transmission cooler. So that's how it looks with the bumper on. So you can see we don't have any more protrusion under the bumper, it fits really neat. With respect to clearance from the wheel, we have about nine or 10 inches from the wheel. So that's really tucked nicely inside the bumper. So I don't have to worry about the wheel hitting it or anything. So you're probably wondering, since we install a smaller transmission cooler, if it's big enough for the Jimny or if it's too small. So I have Hayden website here and on the website, it said for this model, transmission cooler, it's for a full-size vehicle to in 2,500 pounds or a gross vehicle weight of 14,000 pounds. The Jimny gross vehicle weight is about 3,000 pounds. So we weigh under the threshold for what this is for, which means it'll work just fine and it's actually oversized for the Jimny. So some of you may be watching and thinking, why do you need a transmission cooler? So your transmission was designed to operate at a certain temperature, which is roughly around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. If you go above that temperature, say 300 degrees Fahrenheit, you're gonna decrease the lifespan of your transmission. So you wanna keep that temperature close to that 180 degrees Fahrenheit to maximize the lifespan of your transmission. So this transmission cooler helps with keeping that temperature low. Now, do you need one? It depends on your situation. Here in Trinidad, it's a tropical climate, so it's very hot. Also, I offered this Jimny and it has oversized wheels on it. So I would need a transmission cooler, but if you daily drive your Jimny and you live in, let's say, a, clo a cool climate region or area, you may not need it. So it depends on your situation. But for me, I install one just to be safe. Before I move on to the winch, uh, I know some of you probably wondering if I have the aftermarket transmission cooler connected to the radiator or if I bypassed it. Um, I didn't bypass it. I actually have them connected together. So let me show you how I connect it. Right, so it's pretty simple, uh, excuse the mod, but you have your two transmission lines running here. This one supposed to connect to the radiator on that side, and this one connects to the radiator on this side right here. So what I did, I disconnected this line, and I connect one hose from the transmission cooler here, and I connect the other end of the transmission cooler to the radiator. So all I did was disconnect this from the radiator, add one hose from the transmission cooler, and then connect the other hose from the transmission cooler into the radiator. Pretty simple, really straightforward. So we have the gearbox out here, so it usually is like this, but I want this to come in the back here. So I need to rotate it. I did this in another video, in the winch and saw video. If you want, you can go have a look at that. I think that'll be more detailed. But essentially, you just want to take out the gearbox and then undo these Allen screws, rotate the gearbox, and then just assemble everything again. Alright, so now that we have all these screws out, it's just to rotate this however you want it. If you're wondering what type of winch this is, this is a 
Open Road 9500 pound winch. I'll put the link in the description if you want to pick up one yourself. Would highly recommend them. You can imagine if I do all of this and then the switch car will in the back. That won't be very nice. Alright, so I just finished tightening all the screws. Let's get it back on the Jimny and see if it works. Alright, let's scratch out my plate, boy. Wow, that's alright. Been the what else? We have the um, the gearbox related to the box, so if you want to bump box, you have enough room to engage and disengage. Yeah. So we good there. Just to install back the bumper and pull back on the lights. Alright, so that's it for this video. The front of the chimney looking nice and neat again. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe, leave some good vibes in the comments, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.